Mr. Horowitz. Mr. Chairman, let me begin by thanking you for the many hours over many decades you have dedicated to America's creative community. Effective copyright laws give us the confidence to look for the next new sound, but we need your help. One in three CDs sold globally are made by pirates, and only one in 20 downloads is legitimate. We estimate that there were over 40 billion illegal downloads in 2008. That's an online piracy rate of 95%. And when it comes to physical piracy, 90% of recorded music sales in places like China and Russia are counterfeit. Even in many EU countries, the piracy rate is over 50%. These bleak statistics have real costs. Our domestic music industry loses over $5 billion annually in global piracy. And because U.S. music is the most popular genre around the globe, piracy disproportionately affects U.S. artists and the U.S. economy. It means lost jobs and lost tax revenues. If we can't secure a return on our investments, we cannot invest in developing artists. How many great artists will go undiscovered? Will piracy cheat us out of the next Beethoven or the next Beatles? We'll never know. And as manufacturing jobs disappear, intellectual property is how our kids will earn their livelihoods. The stakes are incredibly high, but IP protection has not been the national priority that it needs to be. While we appreciate the complexities of trying to protect intellectual property in a world with different legal regimes and cultures, every country should be expected to abide by basic principles of fairness and the rule of law. You can be a powerful force in sending that message. All of mp3.com, which has been mentioned by some of you today, was a Russian company, and it provides a perfect illustration of how the U.S. government can make a difference. All of MP3 was an online service that sold all the most popular music of the world without any authorization from artists or rights holders. Users were charged a few cents per song, which gave the site a patina of legitimacy. Uh, and, and this was, um, this, the, the, the purchases were, were redeemed through MasterCard or Visa. No money was ever paid out to artists or rights holders. By 2006, it was one of the world's most popular music sites. When the music industry brought the site to the attention of Congress, members like you made the rogue operation the focal point of dialogues on global piracy. When Russian officials wanted to discuss membership in the WTO, the U.S. government used all of mp3.com as an example of why Russia was not ready to join the global alliance. Over time, the spotlight led to action by the Russian government. One of the world's most notorious illegal music sites was reined in because U.S. officials brought attention to its indefensible business model. The success in handling all of mp3.com demonstrates that legislation is not the only tool in Congress's arsenal, and that traditional law enforcement is not the administration's only leverage. We could use that, that kind of spotlight on Baidu, China's number one online search engine. Baidu purposely provides links to unauthorized music sites and is responsible for 50% of the internet-based piracy in China. Google recently launched a fully authorized online music service in China to compete with Baidu. It will be free to users, and content creators will share an ad revenue generated by the site. But can Google China overcome, overcome Baidu's first music, first mover advantage, or the competitive disadvantage of compensating artists and rights holders when Baidu does not? Our piracy problems are not limited to faraway places like Russia and China. Regrettably, as has been mentioned, our closest neighbors present some of our worst piracy challenges. The OECD estimates that Canada has the highest level of online piracy in the world. Amazingly, Canada still has not modernized its copyright law for the digital age and is now a haven for those running unauthorized music websites. And in Mexico, piracy has reached epidemic proportions. Seven out of 10 CDs sold are pirated. 
we hope this committee will call out canada for its utter disregard for the policies at the heart of copyright and its indifference to the realities of the borderless digital marketplace and we urge the committee to add its voice to those calling on mexico's leaders for sustained and consistent anti-piracy enforcement initiatives another area where this committee can make a difference is with the USTR's special 301 list it would be productive for the committee to meet with the ambassadors from the most problematic countries so that you can make clear that lax IP enforcement is unacceptable. They need to be left with a real sense that there are meaningful repercussions for our trading partners if they don't resolve the 301 issues that place them on the list. This would be especially valuable for Mexico and Canada here. Mr. Chairman, we are in a technology revolution where we have the real opportunity to bring music to fran fans everywhere, when they want, where they want, and how they want, in legitimate ways never dreamed of before. However, unless we are vigilant, unless there is basic protection for the work of those who label so, labor so hard to create the magic that is music, the opportunities afforded by breakthroughs in technology will be lost. This will be a tragedy for musicians and fans, for the global economy, and for our culture. We hope that the committee and Congress can send this powerful message to the world. Thank you for your interest and for your continuing efforts on behalf of creators. Thank you very much.